Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. Yesterday, Adobe released an update to Lightroom. It's now Lightroom 6.8, and for Creative Cloud users, it's 2015.8. And in this update, they have the usual under-the-hood improvements to hopefully make Lightroom run a little better. They also have new camera and lens profiles, and they have a couple minor feature improvements. But they have one new feature for Creative Cloud users. So that's only the users of CC 2015.8. They have a new feature called Reference View. And that's what I'm going to be talking about in this uh, video and show you how to use Reference View. Now, Reference View comes in really handy if you processed an image and you like the way you processed it and you want to process another image or images in a similar way. We could use that first image as a reference to process the other images. It would come in really handy. Let's say you're doing a wall mural of a bunch of images. You just went to Paris. You took a bunch of images of the Eiffel Tower from all different angles and you processed one and you want the others processed similarly so your wall mural has like a homogenous look to it. Maybe you're doing a slideshow and you want your slideshow to have a, a consistent look from image to image as you go through. Or possibly you were surfing the internet and you ran across a photographer and you really like the way that person processed their images. You could download one of their images, put it into your Lightroom, and use their image as a reference as you process your own. Now, to use it is what you would do, go into the Develop module, and right below the image, you'll see right here, this is called the Toolbar. If you don't see that, hit the T key on your keyboard. The T key turns the toolbar on and off. So we want that open. Over here towards the left, you'll see RA. That means Reference Active. If we click on that, you'll see we get this split screen. On the right-hand side is our active image. This is the image we're going to be processing. Over here on the left-hand side, we could load in a reference image. And there's a couple different ways you could do that. One way is while you're in the Develop module, if that reference image is down here in the film strip, you could just grab it and drag it up there. Now there is our reference image and there is our active image. Now, Adobe did a couple things that help you maybe match colors a little easier from image to image. One of those things is if you have the histogram open and you look right under the histogram as I hover over the active image, you'll see that there's R, G, and B, and next to each of those letters are a group of two numbers. You'll see R, 58.9, and then there's a slash, and that's 53.1. What that is, is the red value directly under the cursor. The 58.9 is in that same exact spot on the reference image. The 53.1 is underneath the cursor that is currently over the active image. Similarly for green and blue, you'll see green is 64.7 slash 56.9. So what you could do is you could uh, adjust your image, do adjustments to it, and try to get those numbers as close together or close to each other as possible. Then you'll match the colors of the sky in this instance. Now there are some limitations here. The images have to be the same size, pixel and length, uh, width and width have to be the same. So basically, if they're shot from the same camera and you did not crop either of them, this should work fine. The other thing is that the sky has to be in the same spot. And what I mean by that, in this case, we're sampling the sky. It could be the water. Let's say we want to match the color better, a better example. Let's say we want to match the color of the water. Well, if I hover over right here, we're hovering over the dock. So I'm sampling the colors of the dock, but in that same exact spot on this image, we're sampling water. So they, you have to be in the same spot. So if I'm right here, that's water, and probably on water over here too. So you have to uh, have the things you're sampling in the same relative location from the reference image to the active image. So if there was a humongous building right here and I put my cursor right here and I want to match sky, I'll be getting sky pixels on my active image but building pixels 
on my reference image. Hopefully in further upgrades to Lightroom, they make this a little more flexible so that we actually could pick a specific spot on our reference image to match to our active image. Uh, that, in my mind, would make this a much more powerful tool. So that's just to get you along and help you um, better, uh, you know, make the images look similar. Now, there's different views here. We're on the side-by-side -side view. If I click this RA again, we get this uh, vertical view. And then if you click it again, you're back to the side-by-side -side view. If you want to just go back to normal Lightroom, to the left of RA, you'll see just a rectangle. Just click there, and we're right back to the normal develop module. Go back to the RA view. Now, if you want to clear this reference image, if the padlock is unlocked, just jump over to the library module, then jump back to the develop module, and you'll see it's cleared. Now, if the padlock is locked, when you go over to the library module and go back to the develop module, it will stay there. Now, I mentioned to load an image into the reference view. To make it the reference image, you drag it up to the image. Also, your active image is whatever you're clicked on. Well, what if these images are in different folders in your library? Right now, I have them in a collection to make it easy for me to show you how to load them in the reference and active uh, uh, slides. How do you do it if they're in different folders? Well, it's very easy. Um, right now, I have the padlock locked. It doesn't really matter as much. We'll go to the library module, and you could just go to a folder in your library. And I'm going to go to the folder that contains these images just because they have a more homogenous look. And let's say I want one of these images to, uh, to be the, the reference image. I right click on it. Let's, that one's, yeah, this one's processed. So we're going to right click on that. And you could see right here we have open in reference view or set as the reference photo. That first choice means that's the image we're going to be actually processing. The second choice is that's going to be the reference photo. So I'm going to click there. Now the reference photo is set. And we'll go back to the develop module. Now that image is the reference photo. And we still have that same uh, image as our um, active photo. And again, you could change that by just clicking on any different image down in the film strip or go back to your library module and you could just go to any other image for the for so, so it looks very different all right i'm just going to right click on this black and white image and i'm going to go up to set this or open in reference view that's now that's our active image the one we'll be processing so i hope that made sense different ways you could um load an image as the reference image and or load the image as an active image. And again, if you want to clear the reference image, unlock the padlock and just jump over to the library module, jump, jump back into the develop module, and then we have that reference image cleared. If you want to just go back to the you know regular processing, click right here next to the RA and we're back to normal processing. So that's it. That's how you could utilize reference view. Um, as I mentioned, I hope Adobe improves it in the future so that we could more better utilize how to match specific pixels in the sky, let's say, or in the water or in the dock or whatever to match a part of the image uh, of our reference image that might be in a different spot than where it is in our active image. Also, I hope Lightroom 6 users get this feature in one of their future updates as well, because I think it would come in pretty handy in some instances. So that's it for this video. Thank you everyone that watches my videos, and thank you everyone that supports me with donations and or buying my Lightroom presets and Photoshop actions. It's because of you that I'm able to do these free videos, and I truly appreciate every single one of you. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you guys soon.